Hello and welcome to the weekend edition. I'm Dr. Kingori. We have a great show lined up for you. Our guest tonight is one of the most brilliant lawyers in this country. He's a sitting member of parliament for Arieda constituency. Honorable Otiende Amolo is in the house. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Before we get to that part of the show, though, an MCA from Kisi County allegedly sent KCPE candidates a card with a condolence message <laughs> instead of a success card. That's a twisted way of telling exam candidates that we hope what a pass. <laughs> That's not the kind of passing anyone would hope for after an exam. However, it's not, uh, this is not an isolated case because another card was allegedly received by a school in Kiambu Reading. Uh, the county government wishes you success and we hope that you pass away with flying colors. <laughs> now, uh, in other news, uh, Cyprian Kizito, a Catholic archbishop from Kampala, has proposed to the government to deduct tithe directly from people's salaries. As in barely a month, uh, two months after the Kenyan government passed the 8% VAT on products coming from the ground, Uganda may see the introduction of 10% VAT on products coming from above. <laughs> However, in the Ugandan case, VAT stands for value added tithe. <laughs> yes, this came after an apparent, uh, it became apparent that most Ugandans do not file their tithe returns, leading the church uh, to lose billions in tithe fraud. Uh, what is that owing to this phenomenon, there's only like three Ugandans in heaven. <laughs> yes, but, but, but surely, Uganda's not going to heaven might have nothing to do with tithing. It could be, it could be their movies. Here's, here's a snippet of uh, the Ugandan cover of the Black Panther. <laughs> How do you expect to see heaven after confusing people that Waganda and Wakanda is the same thing? <laughs> Elsewhere, according to a new study by the Durham University in the UK, dogs could be trained to detect malaria by sniffing infected people. Yes. Alafu <laughs> unapewa dawa. If, if that comes to effect, it will change how Kenyans will complain about bad doctors. Eh, maze Buddha ni menda osi, maze ka ni melemewa. Nao maumbu wata wa janisa idia. Now, we all know that uh, there are three basic needs of a human being, and they are shel food, shelter, and clothing. And the subject of our show tonight is about the only remaining one, shelter. I say it's the only remaining basic need because nowadays food is a luxury owing to the high cost of living and it's now normal to walk naked courtesy of Instagram. Unapigia mutoto kerere ati anatebea uchi na nikuvaa mevaa tutu bokati. Suigia Instagram upate na muma mamuzima mevaa saviet. Now, um, thanks to social media, just like that, clothes were checked out of the list of basic needs. Food, on the other hand, can pass for an illegal substance depending on the circumstances of the eating. And the response, that's a uko hapa unaniambia ni kupeleke college atifundi wa radio yiko na pesa. Wakati wenzako walikuwa nasoma kazi yako si ilikuwa ni kukula tu. What is the crime in that? Sasa upelekwe college. Si upelekwe yu college inatopelea. Now, that leaves us with only one basic need. Shelter. Housing. A place you can call home. Now, if there's anyone in this country right now who knows how important it is to have your own house, it's Joey. <laughs> yes. yes. Homelessness is technically the reason, one of the reasons he was denied bail. The first accused has indicated that his siblings are likely to find him an alternative accommodation. There is no evidence placed before court to support this preposition. They will find him to be with no fixed support, lacking any deep emotional occupation or family ties in the country and is likely to abscond should need arise. Uh -huh. uh, what that means is that now that Jackie Maribe said that she was not going back to her house, the government does not know where else they can get Joey. <laughs> so they prefer to keep him where they can see him. <laughs> However, see, Joey is an elite homeless person. If we were to go to the, by the definition of who is a homeowner, very few Kenyans would fit that profile, which explains why most Kenyans wake up very early to go to work. <laughs> yes, 
<laughs> Landlords in Kenya are the third most feared lot of individuals after the police and Red Sun. <laughs> yes. Landlords are as respected as judges. Hence the name Lord in Landlords. <laughs> My Lord. Najua katiba yako inasema ni kulipe tarehe tano. Lakini nauliza kwa isani yako. Unaweza tulia kidogo kuna mali ni meka shua bet. <laughs> See, when it comes to landlords, hakunanga chati when one door closes, another opens. When one door closes, unalala inje. <laughs> See, every Kenyan knows that it's easier to explain to your landlord. Uh, it's easier to explain to your boss, actually, why you've, that you've not showed up to work for two weeks. Did you go mepata, please, poya kufanyo manikiwa? It's easier to explain that to your boss than to explain to your landlord what you mean by nipe mbaka 15. <laughs> yes, landlords can be very, very unforgiving. Take this case by Jalango, for example. Unacheki kibichi kama ujalipa rent, eh? <laughs> Siati utakamu pate kifuli kwa mlango. Utapata wametuwa roof, eh? So, <laughs> so wametuwa roof, eh? So, unacheki ya wezi toka haso la lafu kuje ume, u, uingia ti, eh, nikona roof, ha? Unapika nini nini, alafu, uh, unakula... Alafu na jua position ya kwanza ya hasla kulala uko gani? Hey, leo. <laughs> Diyo napata leo, ni 3D. <laughs> uh, you see, but how is kumwelewa mabati ya punishment, especially kama the tenant ni fundi? That's just a glimpse of what the ordinary Kenyans, uh, Kenyan goes through to sleep at night. The technique of a landlord literally getting rid of the roof over your head would also explain why some landlords build uh, uh, substandard houses. Mtu anajenga nyumba week ndio ukikosa kulipa rent na bomoa one mali utalala. Citizenly there have been complaints that the real estate business in Kenya is a scam, that rents are exaggerated. To get an idea of how serious rent and shelter issue is uh, is like ile uzito iko nayo. Check out this place where this man and his family has called home. For two years. Whilst it looks like just one of those old cars to you and me, this car is what this family calls home. For two years, Ismail Abdallah Hamisi has lived in this car with his two sons, 13-year-old Talib Ismail and his 10-year-old brother Said. For more than two years, Ismail has sought employment with no success. As if not enough, his wife, the mother of his children, could not bear the suffering. Right after his water selling business fell in 2013, she left. First of all, his wife left him. This demystifies the stereotype that Dema is here to work on a guy. Yes. Yes. Imagine Mukishi up a lafu, Mutua Kulze. But they knew Pakuapi. <laughs> Shout out to Governor Sonko's family who came to their aid. Two years living in a car is tricky, man. It's tricky. Can you imagine if the guy drinks alcohol? How do you explain to a police officer that you are not drinking while driving? Ati hapo mali umelewa ndiyo nyumbani. Afadi ya kia nani? Igari tukidala ilikuwa kibera. Ndiyo tumefika kia maiko, hata mii sijui. Nafikiria ni mtoto walitoa handbrake kwa bati mbani. See, living in a vehicle is a concept that has been applied all over the world. In fact, converting a bus into a mobile home is a thing. But it's not always as a last resort. Most Kenyans live where they live because they have no other option. According to statistics from uh, the UN Habitat, 56% of Kenyans who live in urban areas live in slums. And the government has tried to reduce this number by initiatives like the slum upgrading, up, upgrading project, only to be hit by obstacles like this. Niambie na vile hapo tunakuja pana pia kuna umaskini wa chakula. Wakati ule ule anakuja na chakula na huyu mwingine ana chakula itakuwa vipi? Hapo tunaona kapia gavai na tuenjo na tuenjo kama sisi mayuthi. Yes. One neighbor has food, the other one doesn't, yet you share one kitchen. That's tricky because kulalanja is a very private thing. <laughs> kulalanja is a closely guarded family secret. See, these houses don't provide room for survival tactic, tactics zile za kulalanjaza mabachela kama kurusha mfupa kwa moto ndio jirani ya siki unapika nyama. Yet in real sense, unakula tu vako. Most people have resorted 
uh, to renting out the houses they were given by the government, and then they went back to the slums. And this brings a debate on what's more important uh, between the issue of uh, unemployment and affordable housing. Now, the housing problem is also not limited to urban areas. One of the criticism faced by the Rural Electrification Project is this. Kweka stima kwa nyumba ya nyasi. Ati nyumba dio earth. This was an issue about priorities. See, according to the World Bank, Kenya needs to build at least 244,000 houses per year. That's to meet the current demand. However, we are currently doing less than that, uh, less than a quarter of that, actually. A quarter of 244,000. Our guest on the show tonight has a very noble initiative dubbed Ondoa Nyasi, whereby he has embarked on a mission to ensure that widows and the less privileged in his constitu constituency can have a decent place to sleep in. We take a short commercial break, but we'll be back with Honorable Ontiende Amolo. See you on the other end of this break. <laughs> Welcome back to the weekend edition. I'm Dr. King. Already the subject on our show tonight is housing, and our guest is best placed to talk about that because he has a personal initiative in, in relation to that particular subject. One of the most brilliant lawyers uh, this country has ever produced, Honorable Otiende Amolo. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome Thank to the show. Thank you very you much. You have very many firsts. Mara, you led in school. Uh, high school, uh, top leading lawyers who are among the best lawyers in this country, Niwewe. So I couldn't afford to look stupid on the show. So I have uh, legal backing of the Constitution of Kenya. <laughs> <laughs> and I have a few notes. But uh, in relation to our subject, your housing, Leo, uh, you have an initiative on Doa Yes. But then, before we even get into it, there's a fake Rarieda MP asking, money in your, asking for money in your name. But before you go there, yes. you forgot to say I was also usually among the first for the top player when I was the university. <laughs> <laughs> in school? Yes, in school and at the university. No. I value food, you know, so as everybody must value food. And you know, the better, the top, the top are the better. So uh, if you were to do that, I'm sure you'd be my size. <laughs> really, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 let us not, <laughs> let's be civil, let's not support it. <laughs> you see, uh, you were in drama, uh, yes. best actor Kwanzaa, uh, mm -hmm. best actor in 1988. 1988, the whole country, national mm -hmm. drama. Mm -hmm. uh, where were you school the top layer? <laughs> <laughs> and you still afford to lead in your school. What did you do differently? No, nothing. It's just hard work and focus. Yes. Uh, I think our principal used to say, whatever you do, yes. do it with all your focus. So if you choose to steal, then steal thoroughly. But he didn't <laughs> tell us to do that. If you choose to eat, eat thoroughly. If you choose to read, read thoroughly. But uh, for now, uh, we've changed the focus. And let me go back to your question. Yes. Um, I'm sure I'm not the only one. A lot of people, it's, it's become a business for people to create fake accounts. And I know that they've created fake accounts even for the IG and for others. What is new is that there are people who create, most of them are actually in prison. And we've discovered they actually work with prison officials and policemen. Because a person in prison who counts of money will not get the opportunity to draw it. So they wow. use people and prisoners to draw it. And that is why some of them is a bit difficult to, uh, to find. But we've reported them, and I've kept telling people that anybody who seeks money, I think there are like four or so fake accounts, all of which I've reported. I some on Twitter, some on Facebook. I think that's what you mean by stealing thoroughly. Because when someone <laughs> is stealing and they're already in jail, what worse can you do to them? <laughs> <you? laughs> in fact, some of them have already been sen sentenced to death. So no one sentence can come their way. I saw someone uh, compare your project with wewe unajenga mpaka nyumba za nyasi. You go there, you're, you, you're in there, you're in it kabisa, 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 kabisa. Mpaka unabeba hizo matope na wilbaro. But then other leaders, um, when they try such projects that say may building a classroom uh, na hiyo matope, it becomes a shameful experience mm. for them. What's the difference? You know, most people don't know the difference between what you're doing and what other leaders are doing. Why is yours special? Well, I wouldn't say it's special. It's just one 
act that uh, I'm sure there are many people who keep doing this, but uh, perhaps it's just not been noticed. But the difference, first of all, is that uh, you can't do what I do with the Ondo Anyasi with schools. Because as a member of parliament, you have the CDF money to use for schools. Yes. So for the schools, and if you see the schools that we worked on in Rareda, we spent a lot of good money because you get about 100 million to spend every year. So, um, and an, on average, a good classroom would probably cost you about 500,000, complete with the tiles and the modern you know, uh, iron sheets and yes. all that. Yes. So you can't go to school and start doing that because that one, we do it because you cannot use public money on it. Yes. I use my own funds. But secondly, it depends on where you come from. You cannot go to the middle of Lovingston and yes. start doing Ondoa Nyasi <laughs> that you are helping because you'd look mad. You'd be taken to Madari immediately. Yes, yes, yes. So it really depends on the area. There are areas that are still really disadvantaged and really poor. Yes. And where people live in tiny grass thatched houses that leak all the time yes. and sometimes are in danger of falling. So if you convert that into just a modest improvement, you spend about 80,000 Kenya shillings with an, you know, a, a proper iron roofed house, then it is a good improvement. So that is the distinction. But most importantly also, it's about the societal involvement. And the idea in doing it and doing it with the people is that you do not pay anybody for labor. It is all volunteerism. Yes, and yes, it, yes. we only do it for widows, so yes. it also enhances the place of the widow in that society. Yes. So that some of those traditional objections and difficulties, including of getting land, yes. are then swept by the wayside. And ah. that perhaps might be the difference. Mm. Let me draw you into something mm. you actually introduced me to. We did research uh, for this show, and I don't know how we missed this. Article 43 of the Constitution, which will get to uh, the fact that you are part of the team that wrote the 2010 draft. Uh, the rights of a tenant when it comes to urban housing. Uh, unlike you, I have to read. <laughs> uh, article 43 into brackets 1. How, how do you read that? Sabbatical 1. Sabbatical 1. Yes. <laughs> Every person has the right to A, the highest attainable standard of health, which includes the right to health care services, including reproductive health care. Every person has a right to the highest attainable standard of health. So, wale watu kukibera, that's their right. <laughs> or that's not what this means. That is not what that means. What does this mean? The government, you see, there's a theory in law yes. that the only reason the government has authority over you yes. is because you've ceded your rights to the government. In return, the government must protect and care for you. It must provide for your security so that Al-Shabaab don't come for you. It must also now provide for health care. Yes. Now, that does not mean that the government will come and follow you with medicine wherever you go. Mm -hmm. But it means you <laughs> ought to have at least some health center locally that you can go to and you can get medicine either free or at an affordable price. That's okay. what that means. Then how comes, I, I th how comes, uh, then when you were part of the drafting of this, did you, when writing this, did you know that the gov did you, could you measure whether the government has the capacity to provide this as is written or it was just in, the, in hope that we could get there sometime? It is actually a demand on government. And the reason why we put that there and the subsequent one in Article 43 yes. is that we realized many of our governments... <laughs> yes. Have I lost you? No, no, no. no, no, no. <laughs> I'm looking at the subsequent one. <laughs> yes. Okay. Many of our governments tend to spend on the wrong things. Yes. You find that more than half the budget goes to military. And if you asked when the, the last time we ever had a war in Kenya, no one will tell you. And if you asked why that military might cannot come and save us from Migingo, no one will tell you either. Yes, yes, yes. The rest of it is spent in corruption and other things that we don't need. And sometimes our governments forget the most basic needs of human beings, just as we said earlier, things yes. like health, things like housing, things like clothing. And those are the things we need them to focus on. So what this article means yes. is that when the government budgets, it must sufficiently budget for these basics, health, housing, uh, you know, uh, water, and related matters that are mentioned in Article 43. So to mean that the government has failed in terms of the delivery of this, following the, the, as someone described it, failed miserably at the Kibera housing project. 
the successive governments have failed. Okay. There is no reason a country such as Kenya that is so rich and loses so much money all the time can have so many slums. I yes. think we probably have the biggest slums south of the Sahara yes, and yes, north yes. of the Limpopo. Kibera. You know, and that yes. is not the way it should be. So this is to make sure that the government starts focusing. And to be fair, yes. the current government has started focusing on housing. Yes, yes, yes. And that is why I think the Jubilee administration, which I have not usually supported, yes. but with which I agree on that question of housing, has identified housing as one of the projects. Yes, yes. yes. Now the that is why agenda. also why the, there has been this idea of introducing a tax for housing. Yes, yes. The, the idea is good. The way it has come out so far is unclear and needs to be relooked at because otherwise it will just be another avenue for corruption. Thank you. When it comes to uh, the rent, uh, rent issues, the rights of a tenant, uh, is it just, I think I, when I when I get to that point, I don't know where that article is. I don't know which, <laughs> what it's subsequent to. But, but how, how much right does a tenant have? See, with these tough economic times, especially after the introduction of the 8% tax, people are complaining, hakuna pesa, there's nowhere, as in uh, companies are scaling down uh, kufungiwa nyumba. D does any landlord have a right to come just lock you out of your house just like that? Ama there's a grace period. Yeah. This is how it works. First of all, it's not in the Constitution. It's in the Landlord and Tenant Act. There's a separate... <laughs> <laughs> There's a separate <laughs> <laughs> act of parliament yes. that just deals with the question of landlords and tenants. Yes. And when you go there, it gets also a little more interesting. Yes. Because there's that which deals with business premises yes. and that which deals with dwelling houses. So let's restrict you to the one of dwelling houses. Yes. Now, in that one, the tenant has very many rights and very many fundamental rights. Okay. But the landlord also has rights. Yes. But once you agree with the landlord and you've rented the place and you've paid the rent, the landlord has no right to come to you at all. It's called quiet enjoyment. Hey. You must quietly enjoy that space that uh -huh. you have rented. Uh -huh. And even if the, t the, the landlord wanted to show you their house, they cannot just come and say, open, I want to show my friend the house. No, 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 no. Yes. They would have to give you notice. They would have to request you and tell you that in two weeks' time, I want to come and have access. Because now, you are now the one occupying. You must enjoy it peaceably you are and the quietly, one. temporarily. Okay. You know, you have the... <laughs> <laughs> but secondly, yes. that right will exist as long as you also do your bit, which is to pay rent. Okay. So you can't go there and say, I have paid rent once, uh, like some people I think have done sometimes in Madari and Kibira, yes. and say that since I paid rent, now I've become the owner. No, yes. you must keep paying rent if you want to enjoy that. Okay. But if you don't pay rent, yes. then what the landlord must do, either of two things, they can demand that you pay the money, or they can get an auctioneer to come and attach your property. Attaching your property means to take your property after giving you notice. Now, the only problem is that there are people who, if you tell them, I will come back in one week to carry your property, <laughs> <laughs> by the next day you will not trace them anywhere <laughs> and you won't trace their property. So I imagine that's the difficulty landlords have, but they just can't come and carry your, or lock the place. Yes. There is no such thing as locking houses as most landlords do. That is completely it's illegal. illegal. It is completely illegal. They must come and do what we call distraint for rent. They give you a notice, say, you owe so much, now we want to see what you have in your house, and they list it, and they tell you, if you still don't pay in seven days, we will come back and carry your worldly belongings. Okay. And is, that a, the, is there a specified period uh, of notice? There's, the notice should be at least seven days. At least seven days? Yes. Okay, I think that clears up a lot of things. Yes. Now, about the Constitution, you are part of the creative team that wrote this. Why are you just coming up with things like Munakam na sem anima kosagani tutaweka? How do you come up with this? Like, do you have all the problems Kenyans have are likely to do? Ama or the offenses? As in mumekram makosa? Do you do you just shoot them up out of the blues or you agree? Let me tell you how you write a constitution. Yes. You imagine that you are ten people dropped in an island. 
that has never been inhabited by anyone. Okay. And you now want to decide that how will we live in this island? Should we not have some basic rules? What if one of us claims that the entire island is theirs? Do you throw the rest of them in the sea? Yes. What if one claims that all the food in that island is theirs? So you sit down and agree on what is the bare minimum for you to continue living side by side as decent human beings. But that is the idea of writing a constitution. But you first think like selfish human beings. <laughs> it is because human beings are selfish <laughs> okay. that you must agree. Because if you don't agree, yes. you will self-destruct. Everyone okay. will claim everything and there will be a fight and perhaps you'll all be dead or only nine of you will be dead. Okay. So the writing a constitution is consulting the people in terms of what they want. People want this, A, the other one wants B. Then you ask the one who wants B that what is it in A that you'd accept to have and vice versa. And you find the middle ground, the minimum that is acceptable. Secondly, as you are doing it, you must know that they are, the mighty are always having a bigger say yes. than the others who are not mighty. So the majority can have their say, but you cannot allow them to overwhelm the minority. So you must also protect the minority, otherwise you know, they will be, you know, obliterated. I mentioned earlier that we are doing less than a quarter of the recommended houses that we are supposed to build according to the statistics by the UN Habitat. Presently, we have a demolition exercise going on. Uh, we have a standing, um, a, what do we call, a standoff between the owners of CIFA apartments, the tenants, and the government. Uh, do, do, when Waitito talked about, uh, the Kiambu governor, Ferdinand Waitito, talked about repairing land, uh, does it make sense to demolish a house that has already been constructed, uh, people were taken advantage of, the houses were approved by government officials, and then you talk of demolishing them because things have changed? I support fully the idea of demolitions of houses that are either built on public land, yes. whether it's riparian land, whether it's a road reserve, or other lands that were preserved. Because that is the only way people can learn not to take such land anymore. Okay. As long as you find any excuse to preserve them, people will always find an excuse to build. However, as we do that, we must trace the public officials who authorized all those things. And as the buildings are coming down, those people must not only be in jail, but if they have any property, they must be made to compensate those who bought those other properties from them. Okay. I think that's a good place to end it. But are you that careful with life? Like, mutu wawezi kushika na kitu ulisema hivi ama vile. Do you practice ama you... I think the difference between you now and you think it's too fast before you respond. Because, first of all, in your response first, unaudhi mwenye kona sifa apartments, unamudhi, alafu unamuleta kwa. The government official who authorized that should be traced. <laughs> and, uh, you choose your enemies very carefully and very wisely. It's very hard to place you. Like, are you taking advantage uh, that the f of the fact that we have leaders, most leaders are not as brilliant as you are, and uh, the standards are too low? You ch as in, you choose very wisely. It's very hard. You, it's very hard to get you on the wrong side of the president, and you still have disagreed with the former prime minister in a very smart way. So you cannot offend his side, now where's you offend his side? <laughs> how do you manage that? But it's simple. Uh, you know, uh, like you, Dr. Kingori. Yes. You just make sure that anything that is too serious, you make a joke out of it, and then it goes. <laughs> so you don't offend anyone, <laughs> but you still say what you want to say. Like I was watching the things we say today, quite honestly, yes. without some myth, it would yes. have been offensive. But it's because it is you. Yeah. So it is not a question. You just have to know how to make light, heavy stuff sometimes, and make heavy, light stuff. So you are the me politician. <laughs> the politician version of me. I'm the it's one easier. who must survive. You know, politics in this country yes. is like walking in a river infested with crocodiles. Some which uh, are uh, wild, yes. some which are supposed to be tamed. River but Jordan. trust me. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, River Jordan, but yes. with crocodiles. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and so you must know how to walk because, yes. trust me, there's a saying in my language, 
that you can never seek refuge in the house of a crocodile. Even when you think it is a tamed one, yes. trust me, you will make the, the supper for that evening. Yes. So you must just know how to, to step carefully yes. and not, uh, you know, get caught. Wapi makofi ya honorable Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. We hope to, to invite you. Tena Utakam. Yes. Our audience today, uh, we again, Daystar has been represented. <laughs> and also St. Paul's has been represented. <laughs> <laughs> That's it for the weekend edition. See you next week. My name is Dr. Kimori.